Okay, so let's spend a little bit of time just talking about maximising your redundancy payment. And, and I guess when we talk about that, we're not talking about maximising the actual payment itself, but really just making sure that you're making the most of the payment when you do actually receive it. And I guess the things that we think about firstly when we speak to clients is, is focusing firstly on the short-term issues. And, and often that really relates to just making sure you've got enough cash to fund your short-term expenses. So the things that we'll often think about there um, are maybe to put the money into like um, a cash account, maybe a high yielding cash account where you can access the money quite quickly. Um, or for those people who've still got a mortgage, we'll often suggest that they put the money into an offset account where they can, again, access it you know, whenever they need it. And irrespective of what option you select, uh, a good strategy we'll often think about for clients is um, you know, setting up a regular direct debit from that, from that account, which you know, helps to sort of fund their day-to-day -day living expenses and effectively replicates the income that they had previously. And then once you've addressed the short-term needs, it's then important to start looking at the medium to long-term considerations. Um, so these include looking at repaying or reducing your debt, and this includes credit cards, um, car loans, mortgages, investment loans, those type of things there. Possibly also looking at making additional super contributions. So depending on the amount and size of the redundancy payment, you could look at uh, making pre-tax contributions or post-tax contributions. Um, and then finally, looking at investing outside of super. So mm. you may want to retain access to those funds. So looking at things like, depending on the size of the payment, uh, shares, managed funds and investment property could be appropriate.